going. So slightly modification of my talk, uh, especially with nano ribbons. If someone is interested, it's actually graphene nano ribbons, and this is the latest work uh, it just been published. So if someone is interested specifically in graphene nano ribbons, I would be happy to talk to you. Um, I came from Waterloo, um, which is just 50 minutes west of Toronto. Uh, we have two universities there. This is the Laurier, which is only 100 years old, and the University of Waterloo was created on the basis of Laurier. We have the Riven Institute for Theoretical Physics, uh, we have Blackberry Headquarters, and we have Maple Software in the crew. Um, this is outline of my talk. So, uh, first, uh, I'll, I'll give uh, a brief introduction to motivation for this work. Uh, basically, what we do uh, are related to coupled effects in uh, low dimensional nanostructures. And spin orbit coupling comes naturally, but before I'm going to talk about spin orbit coupling, I'm going to talk about actual coupling and coupled effects in low dimensional nanostructures. Um, then uh, I'll move to the first part of my talk, and I'm going to talk about gate control of GIF hatter in, in semiconductors and its estimation of phonon mediated spin fleet. Uh, right specifically in, uh, in semiconductors with uh, possible application in quantum computing. Um, and the second part is going to be adiabatic transport of quantum dot in two-dimensional plane and also spin control through battery phase. And uh, so sort of immediately some of the results are highlighted here. So uh, one, of the, one of the highlights here uh, we're going to emphasize anisotropic effects uh, because specifically anisotropic effects can extend the tunability of the G factor to larger quantum dots uh, or vice versa. Anisotropic effects uh, can extend spin hot spots to larger quantum dots and vice versa, and spin echo uh, effects can be observed during the adiabatic movement uh, of the dots. And sun change in the G factor can be reflected in the battery phase. And, and then we'll briefly conclude and, and summarize what I'm going to talk about. So, as I said, the, the first uh, introduction and motivation um, many things that we do are related to coupled effects. And if you're talking about coupled effects, if you're talking about misfit piezoelectric effects, if you're talking about thermal strain accounting in the property of quantum dots, Somehow you have to average over atomistic scales. And of course you could do that with many different methodologies, classical empirical time binding, pseudo-potential, and kdp potential. On the first slides here, what you will see, you will see basically averaging using k.p theory. And the reason being because it's very easy to incorporate this coupled effects, for example, piezo effect or thermal strain, uh, or magneto-electromechanical effects. Uh, and reflect them or account for them in the properties of quantum dots uh, rather than in other averaging methodology. So that's the reason. Um, the other thing that I would like to mention that uh, most of testing has been done on these uh, what we call half-board quantum dots that are experimentally grown by our collaborators in the higher. Um, and you see basically the dimension here. So what you have, you have a gallium arsenide substrate, you have indium arsenide quantum dot, and you have either gallium cesium or indium cesium cap over there. And the dimensions basically you see here um, of all those. So, so basically this experimentally grown quantum dot has been used as a sort of testing ground for the things that we do um, in, in model. Uh, so the, the first slide related specifically to that quantum dot that you just seen, uh, just right here, um, uh, is basically uh, based on uh, <coughs> calculation of property uh, quantum dots, uh, specifically band structure calculations, where we um, use effectively K, uh, eight uh, band model. Uh, so basically you have uh, eight Schrodinger type uh, equations coupled together to the uh, Maxwell equation and elasticity equations. Um, and this is done in a trading manner until the convergence. Um, if you do that, of course you would observe, if you account for misfit and piezoelectric effects, uh, you would uh, observe uh, widening of band gaps. So this is not something new, but as I said, this is testing ground specifically for this quantum load that our collaborator grow. And then uh, uh, having, uh, having developed this model that I mentioned, coupled model, which, which contains sort of 12 uh, partial differential type of equations, which you saw iteratively, 
between Maxwell uh, plus elasticity equations, which you fit in into your Hamiltonian for eight uh, bent, uh, eight, eight bent bent structure calculation models. Uh, based on that, you could analyze the number of effects uh, which are not possible to do without the accounting for this carbon. One of them, for example, as you know, for example, if, if you consider super lattices, uh, which is basically on, on the next slide, um, many uh, assumptions that you see in the literature that, of course, in one dimension the super lattice is too long and therefore the structure is considered to be as one dimensional structure. Uh, however, of course, finite side effects are important. And again, based on, based on this model that I just mentioned, you could uh, show and quantitatively uh, or quantify basically this effect of finite side size effects in, in uh, nanowire super lattices. Uh, the other thing, as, as I mentioned, is this uh, lattice misfit, of course, that you have to account for and also gives electric effects. What is uh, uh, this is a truncated pyramidal quantum door, but the same you could do also in the, in the uh, uh, nanowires in, in other low dimensional structure. And again, you could quantify the effect of coupling or, for example, piezoelectric effects in this uh, type of uh, 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 low dimensional nanostructures. The other thing which is important here that allows us to analyze using those models that we developed is actually critical radius and barrier localization. Um, which, uh, again, uh, if someone is interested in details, I would be happy to refer you to recently published paper that we've done in that field. Uh, another important, again, thing that you, and, and you will see actually in this talk, uh, when I'm going to talk about anisotropic effects, that you may observe cyclical breaking in low dimensional structures, even in relatively simple, uh, uh, relatively simple sessional structures. Um, now, the, the next uh, that I mentioned in the beginning is actually thermal uh, stresses. Thermal stresses are extremely important here too, which is very often ignored, but uh, in fact, increasing the magnitude of the mechanical stress strain, you will observe decrease in the electric potential and the electric field. And then, uh, of course, uh, the structure to study here and to see those effects it's not just cubic, but it's met a significantly higher influence of uh, electromechanical properties, specifically in root side on the structure compared to using lamp nanostructures. Um, something also that, uh, that I leave aside from this talk is the influence of phase transformations and phase stability in nanostructures that we've also have been analyzing. Um, now, related to these uh, thermal stresses that I mentioned, what you observe if you account using those couple models that we developed for thermal stresses, a significant reduction in electronic state energy due to thermal loading, uh, which you would observe in such a population. This is a very simple example, but it's kind of uh, uh, qualitatively also would demonstrate the importance of this couple. Take the very simple uh, super lattice of this type. So you have alternating layers, gallium nitride and aluminium nitride. So dimensions are given here. So one uh, sort of slice is 5 nanometers here, diameter is 10 nanometers. And the total length of the structure is 100 nanometers. So uh, do bent structure calculations, and do bent structure calculations without accounting do, for those coupled effects. And then do the same accounting for the coupled effects, for example, for piezo effects and others. What you would see, you would see already the ground state uh, energy accumulated in this. Uh, this is the same uh, super lattice as you see here, just vertically placed. So this is horizontal, this is the same vertically placed. So if you would not account for uh, this type of effects, you see the localization basically somewhere closer to the middle of the structure. If you do account, of course, energy are going to be different, and you would see the localization uh, of ground state with the thermal electromechanical effects that I've been talking about, basically, in a completely different layer of this uh, number one super lattice. Um, uh, finally, uh, related to uh, this couple of effects, is of course you have to account for magnetic and magnetic fields. So, altogether, basically, we're talking here about magnetic thermal electromechanical coupling. And again, if someone is interested in details, I could provide you this. But, but the point is that what is in black here everywhere for, uh, for example, are different components of strain or electric potential or electric field. So what is completely black, it's without coupling. What you see in green or red, dotted red or green, this is miscoupling for different types of materials. 
And of course, you could quantify that for different types of, not only for super lattices, but for quantum dots as well. So this is two examples of even aluminum nitride, yellow nitride, and uh, this type of quantum dots. So this is uh, related to introduction, basically, of what we do and how we do when we account for coupled effects. Now I would like to move to actually to spin, specifically spin orbit coupling, which is another important couple of effects specifically in the context of this talk and in the context of this conference. Uh, the motivation here is uh, largely, in, in a sense, uh, uh, is done by, by spin single electron transistors uh, and application of quantum dot for laser and light and emitting diodes application type. And there are uh, sort of references here uh, prior which use similar ideas that uh, I'm going to talk about our early paper as well in this side. Secondly, later in this talk, uh, closer to the, to the very end, I'm going also to talk about manipulation of spins through the battery phase, uh, uh, again motivated by earlier work, for example, by San Jose. Uh, so what we do here, um, as I said, anisotropic effects uh, uh, are quite important, and uh, you will see uh, basically why in try to demonstrate uh, this uh, effect of anisotropic effect. So what we do here, uh, we uh, analyze, uh, we, uh, analyze uh, uh, quantum dot uh, semiconductor structures uh, based on the uh, sort of standard part of Hamiltonian, um, apart from the fact accounting for the magnetic field of all, uh, uh, apart from the fact that instead of kind of circular quantum dots, we use uh, ratio A and B to account for possible anisotropic effects here. Uh, the, uh, this part of Hamiltonian is related to the Rajba spin orbit coupling, so which is very important in the rest of my talk to differentiate between Rajba and Dresenhau spin orbit coupling. Uh, so the first one is come from the lack of structural inversion asymmetry, um, which is defined here, so you will see also this coupling coefficient gamma r later on in the talk. And the second one, which is this part of the Hamiltonian, is bulk inversion asymmetry leads to Dresselhaus spin orbit coupling. And again, you will see this coupling coefficient later in the talk. And electric field could be one of the control variables that uh, you are going to see uh, also uh, later. So uh, the first step, uh, of course, we were trying to construct the realistic confining potential, um, which is uh, a sort of not completely trivial task in itself. So given the experimental structure that, that you see here, we were trying to sort of to fit the parameter AB in such a way that to reflect this confining potential in the best possible way. Um, so sort of the answer is lying here, but of course you have to do um, quite a bit of calculation using finite element method and so the Poisson equation to find this potential. So, uh, the, the summary, uh, uh, basically you could use different uh, polynomial feed, you could use different aspect ratio uh, for this uh, PEA, but uh, to sum up, uh, sort of model potential, if you see here in red, and polynomial feed, which you see here in purple, is, uh, gives you the best possible feed, and that's exactly what we were using in the calculation that you, you will see uh, on the next slide. So to tune this uh, G factor, which is defined in the standard way, is the application of gate control electric fields in the realistic devices. This is what's behind of what we do in this part uh, of my presentation. Um, and uh, the, the first thing what you have to note, of course, is that I am already here, even at this early stage, is that anisotropic effects would suppress the G factor towards the bulk crystal. You would see a better picture on the next on one of the next slide. Now, now if you go back uh, 15 years, so Yabonovic group was the first to uh, look at this from an experimental point of view, and they looked at the wave function of a lab where electric fields can move the wave function to sample different materials. For example, for yellow arsenide, you will see uh, negative the G factor. For this type of material, you can see positive and so on. Uh, so based on um, our model, again accounting already for spin uh, orbit coupling, uh, we calculated this G factor as the function of quantum dot radii for different, uh, for different uh, values of electric field having fixed the magnetic field. Uh, so, and you see here, sort of starting with black, 
which uh, does not go into the negative value, but eventually, when you increase the electric field, you would see the G factor changes in sign. Uh, and of course, the aspect ratio here is a little bit unrealistic and is different from what we chose before. But this is kind of this experimental work of Yamanovich was a motivation to study a little bit further these anisotropic effects, and that's what we need. Uh, so, uh, what we need, the effect we analyze now, as you see on the previous picture, the fixed magnetic field, and we choose different, uh, different values for the electric field. Here we analyze the energy as a function of the uh, magnetic field. And what you see, uh, you see this different methodology, whether you use perturbation results or you use numerical results, you would see, you would see energy uh, level crossing here. Um, and uh, again, experimental work that motivated that was the work of Takahashi that uh, published uh, six years ago. Um, and uh, we used that as, as a motivation as what we do, and also to analyze uh, the effect of mesotropic effects. So basically, the final potential, as you've seen already in the previous uh, slides, uh, where we were trying to fit that this polynomial dependency is given here. Now, so what you have to do, remember I was uh, telling you that we have to differentiate between Rajba spin orbit coupling and Dresselhaus spin orbit coupling. So we can see the three different cases where, uh, where uh, Rajba uh, spin orbit coupling prevailed, when Dresselhaus spin orbit coupling prevailed, and when they have equal strengths, Rajba and, and Dresselhaus spin orbit coupling. Uh, so, uh, the, the uh, analysis that we've done, you've seen basically, uh, uh, this is a modified picture that you've seen already before. This is different curves correspond different type of materials for quantum growth. Yellow marcinite, indium marcinite, yellow silver, indium silver. Uh, this is uh, an insert that, that uh, uh, sort of gives you the clue for what is quoted here. So, this is the, the uh, G factor with respect to magnetic field, with respect to electric field, and with respect to the dimension of quantum dots, quantum dots radii. And here, what you see, of course, as I said, you have to account, you have to differentiate between different types of coupling. And this is to highlight uh, what I just said. So, if you plot G factor as a function of electric field, and you plot uh, uh, different, uh, uh, and if you account for different type of coupling, for example, in flat, this is Rajba case, uh, for red is little house case, and blue is uh, mixed case, you will observe the suppression of G factor towards the ball crystal uh, if you account for this spin orbit, for example, this spin orbit coupling. And uh, this, this is basically the first uh, point of the summary. And of course, electric magnetic field tunability of the G factor, at least in India, Marcinite quantum dots uh, covers a wide range of G factors through strong Rajba spin orbit coupling. Uh, plus, uh, the, the spin orbit coupling itself induces it, it, it uh, anisotropic effects uh, in the G factor of quantum dots. Level crossing points can be achieved with completely accessible value of quantum dot radii and magnetic field. Uh, so, the next what I'm going to do, I'm going to analyze the phenomenon mediated spin transition rate. So the Hamiltonian here remains the same as you've seen before. So this kind of classical part, this is uh, kind of in the z direction of growth part of the Hamiltonian. This is Rajba spin orbit coupling, Dresselhaus spin orbit coupling. So we, what we account for, we account for interaction of electron and piezo phenomenon here. And then uh, having found this part, what you do, you substitute this part just right here and apply the Fermi golden rule to find the transition, uh, transition rates. Uh, uh, you've seen already this picture, this is energy versus magnetic field, and this is, uh, is a pain with uh, different type of methodology. Uh, Das Sharma probably the first who, uh, who uh, looked at that, and then the was uh, also looked at this uh, similar things. And I'll, I'll highlight the difference what we actually uh, did uh, here. Different. As you see already, the type of the anisotropic effect is what I'm going to look at. So the, the first uh, part, uh, you can see the confining potential just a little bit for circular quantum dot that has been done by other courses already before. Um, and um, uh, what uh, you know, kind of the spin transition rates you, you've seen already before on the previous slide. Uh, the, the conclusion from this analysis is that the spin fit rate is enhanced with the wave control of the fields. Uh, and G factor changes, uh, as you see here from this plot, we see some transition rates in quantum dot radii, uh, uh, changes its sign at around 60 nanometers, which provides negligible form density of state, and therefore spin fluid rates vanishes 
And when a level crossing can be seen as successful, we have a very good point to talk uh, earlier. Um, now, so, so uh, again, uh, keeping, keeping this uh, and, and providing the, the results that uh, have been already obtained by other courses, for example, in this reference, separately from the risk of and Casper case, uh, of course, what has been observed is that cusp like structure can be seen for pure Rajma case in the phenomenon spin free plate. And the uh, spin free plate is monotonous function uh, of the magnetic field for pure decimal house case. And, and, and of course, the question is why? It's easy to answer if you analyze the magnetic moment here, uh, specifically the denominator uh, in, in both cases for the Rajma and the decimal house case. Um, uh, it, but, um, the, the uh, question is, what is going, uh, what sort of influence uh, is going to be if you do account for anisotropic effect in this situation? And if you do so, um, uh, specifically, uh, if you can find the potential, you choose in the realistic form uh, where we were mentioned experimental results and our computational result, and then calculate the spin transition rate. Then what you would see, you would see that the spin hot spot, for example, the cusp like structure due to accident, uh, accidental degeneracy point in the phenomenon spin fluid rates, can be seen also for the pure vessel house case. Um, and in both isotropic and anisotropic quantum spin fluid rates vanishing like uh, 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 the, the value of magnetic field in the power file. So what is important to realize that uh, extremely important in, in oops, sorry. Extremely important to account for anisotropic effects uh, when you consider the situation like that. So this is a conclusion of this part of my uh, talk. Um, so uh, I probably it's not going to drag on that because you see, you see as, as we go. And if you have any questions, we be happy to highlight them. Uh, instead, I'm uh, going to the second part of my talk, which is steam manipulations to the geometric phase. Um, and specifically, I'm going to look at the uh, proposal that has been done by San Jose of this type. So what we do here, we uh, use time-dependent uh, Schrodinger type of equation to stable the system, how it involves the end. Um, and then, um, at any instance, uh, basically, you could try down the, uh, this representation. Where, of course, both factors are important. One is the bicycle dynamical phase factor, but also the geometric phase factor of the type of very phase. This is kind of political incorrect, as you know, namely because the first 30 years before Michael Berry, it was discovered by the Indian physicist. Um, and uh, this is the, the uh, definition that we are going to use, and, and you will see the plots on the uh, slides uh, later on. So the uh, first uh, uh, easier sort of case, which is non-degenerate perturbation theory case, and we find uh, very phasic quantum dots uh, represented in this way. And then we analyze interplay between Rajba and Gressel House before the coupling using the theory that uh, I've been talking already before, um, uh, specifically uh, in the very phase. Um, and what you observe, you observe sign change in the G factor, level crossing in the very phase can be obtained. And uh, very phase is extremely sensitive to the magnetic field quantum dot radii and the electric field along the z direction. So this is, uh, uh, if you like, a uh, conclusion of that. If you go to, uh, so, so if it, this is just kind of like what you already seen on the previous slide, uh, where you split that into the magnetic phase factor and very phase. Um, and uh, if you go to uh, a degenerate case, the situation becomes uh, more complicated because uh, here uh, UAB is non and unitary transformation. And uh, what uh, we were trying to do uh, using sort of classical or very old works, uh, works in this field, uh, we were trying to find or to apply Feynman disentanglement of operators to find the exact evolution operator for the hematoma associated with this quantum law. Um, and, um, well, there are sort of possible applications uh, of this type in quantum computing, for example. Uh, so, as I mentioned already before, the, um, as far as we know, uh, one of the first work uh, that, that was looking at uh, this type of problems was the work of San Jose um, some years back. And uh, we sort of follow this idea, we can see the quantum dot ordering in the 
equals pass in the claim of uh, uh, two uh, dimensional electron gas. Um, and earlier result that we published well, maybe six years ago, where again we were considering and differentiating and analyzing the different effects of different spin orbit Kalten, specifically Rajba and Dressel House. Uh, in, in order to do that, as I said, we applied farmer and disengagement operator technique to find the exact evolution of the rate. If someone is interested in detail and these technical details, this is basically the first tool uh, that, that we've done in this field some years back. Uh, what is interesting here, so this is uh, uh, the highlight, uh, one of the highlights of that. Uh, so uh, what we analyzed, we analyzed the evolution of spin dynamics during the elevated movement of this quantum dot in the plane of two-dimensional uh, electron gas. Uh, so uh, if you plot this uh, transition probability that you've seen uh, uh, defined using the uh, finger of the rule, um, uh, so, and, and plot them as a function of uh, rotation, uh, uh, rotation angle um, for different types of situations. So, for example, when you account only for the Rajma spin orbit case, or only for the Rizalhaus spin orbit case, and for the mixed case, uh, in black you see here the value of electric field of this type, for red you see high electric field. Uh, you see that, uh, so the probability one, wouldn't be achieved either for Rajma nor for the result house case. However, you will be very close, pretty much, at least theoretically, and it's the probability of one in the mixed case situation. So the conclusion of that is that spin fluid transition probability is enhanced with the gain control electric field. Of course, what, what is important, the periodicity of the gain waves is reduced with increasing electric field, which provides shortcut to flip the spin rapidly. And the periodicity of the propagating waves are different for the pure Rajva and the pure result house cases. As a result, you could observe the spin angle due to the superposition of this Rajva and result house uh, spin waves. And, uh, so this is, this is something that is represented on this picture and in this picture. Um, so uh, also we analyze uh, different type of characteristics uh, here related to this uh, uh, very phase uh, situation, specifically geometric spin manipulation in front of dots. Um, what is important, and this is something that you uh, kind of already highlighted here for the mixed case where this uh, transition probability is, is the highest and either pretty close or theoretically one. Um, uh, like further analysis uh, highlight also that it is very important that both the Rajma and Rizal House spin orbit Kalten should be present in flipping the spin while the geometric phase. Um, right, so, and, and the last uh, thing that I just would like to mention is that um, there is an interest uh, also for the situation for analysis of quantum load uh, for high magnetic fields. And uh, this is something that we also were trying to analyze here. For example, in this plot you see for different, uh, for different uh, uh, component of electric fields, um, the, the value of G factor as a function of uh, fermi high magnetic field. Uh, one of the conclusions that you could make here is that for small quantum dots, spin hotspot can be observed at uh, large magnetic fields, which can be avoided during the design of quantum dots devices. Uh, and this is also uh, highlighted with this uh, uh, transition, transition rate as a function of magnetic field. Uh, this is the summary of this part of my talk. So, uh, one is that uh, you would observe some change in the G factor, uh, which is reflected in the manipulation of spin where scalar battery phase. I was talking about scalar battery phase, so we did on the, uh, on the uh, generalization of that scalar uh, battery phase as well. Um, exact evolution operator has been found by a fine and disentangled operator scheme. Um, which allows to analyze a number of different uh, uh, properties of, uh, um, of quantum dots. Um, we propose an effort to flip the spin completely by a <coughs> transport of quantum dot. As I said, this is, was originally based on some Jose work, but we also account for additional effects that have, have not been there before. Uh, and spin hot spot uh, due to anisotropic effects in the Dresselhaus spin orbit coupling can be, can be observed here 
as well, again, specifically because you account for this anisotropic effect. Uh, this is our uh, finding agency, and uh, you know, I haven't mentioned a number of parts, uh, just very briefly, for example, phase transformations in low dimensional nanostructures. So, um, and also uh, we are doing uh, biological nanostructures as well, such as uh, other main nanostructures. So this is uh, a reasonably uh, complete list of uh, people who are based in Canada and our collaborators in uh, US and Europe uh, related in one way or another to this work. Thank you very much for your attention. What value of uh, spin flip uh, frequency of spin flip, uh, flip frequency that, that you find? Uh, one of the plots that basically can show that is, uh, is uh, this, what, what we analyze, you are talking about this very phase situation, right? The last. I don't know. Uh, in any situation. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, no, the, probably the best, uh, um, so, so the picture that I could just point out, that, that I have available at the moment is, the, uh, this transition probability rate as a function of rotation angle. Um, and we analyze the entire range, the entire possible range of uh, different frequency situations. Um, so, I'm not sure which. Where your frequency do you know? The, we did, we did for different, for different sampling of different frequencies, but uh, I don't have a slide here specifically for the specific frequency. This is rather the, um, the entire range of frequency, so the transition probability range as a, as a function of rotational angle. I, I don't have that, I don't have that with me now, but I could... Uh, what the value? I, I don't want to mislead you at the moment, so I'd rather... But, but I have that information with me. Thank you. Uh, is it also possible to get anisotropic in G-factors, like spatial? Uh, well, I, th I think that's that's what we do. So, so ah, okay. uh, well, so, so look, uh, what, what we do here, we do the following. For example, you know, this is something without anisotropic effect, and uh, you know, it has been done by other people. Uh, what we do, uh, we uh, do, uh, we account for anisotropic effect in a very simple way. Namely, we add in the confining potential this aspect ratio a and b to look in the simplest possible way for anisotropic effect. On the one hand, it's a very simple way. On the other way, on the other hand, this is a very realistic way because we effectively, as you see here, um, we, uh, we actually uh, use a realistic confining potential done experimentally, and then we feed that potential for our numerical calculations. So on the one hand, the polynomial fit I mean the anisotropic in G factors. Right? Yes. Long, yeah. no, longitudinal and the right. What right. is the this is between longitudinal and right. sure. transverse This is has been accounted for. This is has been accounted for. Yes. Any further comments or questions? If not, let's thank you.